This is USMLE QA, USMLE material presented in a question and answer format structured similar to the first date for the USMLE Step 1 book. Question, what is I cell disease? Answer, I cell disease, also known as inclusion cell disease or mucolipidosis type 2, is an inherited lysosomal storage disorder caused by a defect in the N acetylglucosaminyl 1 phosphotransferase enzyme. Question, how does the defect in N acetylglucosaminyl 1 phosphotransferase enzyme lead to I cell disease? Answer, the defect in N acetylglucosaminyl 1 phosphotransferase enzyme leads to failure of the Golgi to phosphorylate mannose residues on glycoproteins which results in enzymes being secreted extracellularly rather than delivered to lysosomes, leading to lysosomes deficient in digestive enzymes, leading to buildup of cellular debris in lysosomes. Question, what are the symptoms of eye cell disease? Answer, symptoms of eye cell disease include coarse facial features, gingival hyperplasia, corneal clouding, restricted joint movements, claw hand deformities, kyphoscoliosis, and increased plasma levels of lysosomal enzymes. Symptoms are similar to but more severe than Hurler syndrome. Question, Question, is I cell disease fatal? Answer, I cell disease is often fatal in childhood. Question, is I cell disease inherited? Answer, yes, I cell disease is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. Question, how is I cell disease diagnosed? Answer, I cell disease can be diagnosed through genetic testing enzyme assays, and imaging studies. Question, is there any treatment for eye cell disease? Answer, currently, there is no cure for eye cell disease. Treatment is supportive and may include physical therapy, occupational therapy, and orthopedic surgery to address joint and skeletal abnormalities. Enzyme replacement therapy is also being researched as a potential treatment option. Question, how does the deficiency of digestive enzymes and lysosomes lead to eye cell disease? Answer, the deficiency of digestive enzymes and lysosomes leads to the accumulation of cellular debris in lysosomes, which leads to the characteristic inclusion bodies seen in eye cell disease. These inclusion bodies can damage cells and tissues, leading to the symptoms of the disorder. Question, is eye cell disease the same as Hurler syndrome? Answer, no, eye cell disease and Hurler syndrome are different but they have some similarities. Both are inherited lysosomal storage disorders, but I cell disease is caused by a defect in the n acetylglucosaminyl one phosphotransferase enzyme, while Hurler syndrome is caused by a deficiency of the enzyme alpha-L-igeronidase. Symptoms of I cell disease are more severe than those of Hurler syndrome. Question, can I cell disease be prevented? Answer, since I cell disease is an inherited disorder, it cannot be prevented. Genetic counseling may be recommended for individuals with a family history of the disorder to understand the risks of passing it on to their offspring. Question, what are the long-term complications of eye cell disease? Answer, long-term complications of eye cell disease can include severe developmental delay and intellectual disability, restricted joint movements, claw hand deformities, kyphoscoliosis, and organ damage. The accumulation of cellular debris in the lysosomes can also lead to damage in the brain, bones, and other organs. Individuals with eye cell disease may also have an increased risk of infections and other medical issues. Question, how common is eye cell disease? Answer, eye cell disease is a rare disorder. The exact incidence of eye cell disease is not known but it is estimated to affect 1 in 100,000 individuals. Question, are there any organizations that support individuals with eye cell disease and their families? Answer, yes, there are organizations that provide support for individuals with eye cell disease and their families, such as the Mucolipidosis Type 2 International Support Group and the Lysosomal Disease Network. These organizations provide information, resources, and support for individuals affected by eye cell disease, as well as funding for research and advocacy. Thank you for watching our Q&A format video. We hope this helped you learn, review, and retain knowledge needed for the USMLEs. For more information on this topic, check out the link in the description. Now, if you want to take your USMLE prep to the next level, be sure to check out all our courses, which are structured to follow along with the first date for the USMLE Step 1 book. You can find us at usmleqa.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe.